Welcome to the Live from the Hive pre-match show. The Bees are in Vanarama National League action as we welcome Wildstone to the Hive London, looking to bounce back from Wednesday's disappointing defeat to FC Halifax Town. Coming up on the preview show, we get the thoughts of manager Peter Beadle as he previews this afternoon's clash with the Stones. We catch up with new man Bill Almosny after he joined in the week. And we take a look at the new safety protocols as we welcome the Bee Army back to the Hive London for the first time this season. There's plenty to come, so sit back, relax and get in the mood for this afternoon's match. <laughs> Experienced and versatile centre-back Bill Almosny joined in the week. We caught up with him to get his thoughts on joining the Bees. Bill, first of all, welcome to Barnet. Uh, you must be delighted to be joining on. Of course, yeah. Uh, I'm very happy. Uh, I come here last, last year nearly, uh, after it was the Covid. So uh, after, uh, after the Covid it was difficult to sign. But I'm happy and delighted to, to join Barnet. You've been training with the boys for the last week or so again. It yeah. must be good to see some of the familiar faces and there's some new boys, of course, this year as well. Yeah, I agree. So I played with Lochi, the goalkeeper, when I in Ipswich. So, mm. of course, it's good to, to train with him. And after, like, uh, the guy, I feel, uh, I feel, like, very welcome. Uh, they helped me to, to just, like, uh, feel like I'm a player already uh, before I sign. So very, very good, yeah. Uh, Peter, obviously, is brought you in. Uh, yeah. What's it been like working with him over the short time you've been trialling before you've joined? Uh, very good, very good so far. So I like the way how he's, he's managing the team, how uh, he put like some love uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the, in the, on the pitch. So, so far very good, yeah. Uh, looking at your record, for someone who primarily is a centre-half, you've got a great goal-scoring record. Yeah. Just tell us a bit about what you see your best position is and what you can bring to this Barnet team. So I know like I like scoring goal. I think everyone likes scoring goal. So um, I know like in the front of the goal, uh, uh, I'm I'm a little bit like confidence. I have a lot of confidence, so I can score goals. Uh, and defensively, I would try like to keep the clean sheet. Of course, I think my best position is centre back, but I can help up front because I'm tall and I can win header. Uh, if we have to play long, uh, this is, I think this is my threat. Yeah, defensively passing, uh, try to play from from the back and uh, hopefully try to score some goals for Barnett. It would be good to add some goals uh, this season. You've had a lot of experience in the Football League when you at like to Ipswich South End, so it's going to be sort of a seamless move back into to National League football. We must be looking forward to hopefully getting some games under your belt. Of course, yeah. So the last couple of years was difficult. I was in some other countries. I, like They didn't pay me, so after I like, had to go through the FIFA and everything, so I wasn't able to cancel my contract or like to, to be able like to to be fit, match fit. So I'm happy like Barnett gave me the chance like to be match fit and like to come back and on my top level and to maybe have hope like we get uh, higher, and higher, higher and higher in the league. You played for Rangers, which is a, a massive club. Just tell us a bit about that experience because that must have been fantastic playing in front of, I don't know, 40,000 odd fans every week. I agree, yeah. So of, of course, like it was one of my best experience because like, the, fan, the stadium is big, it's one of the biggest I played. Uh, and uh, of course, fans everywhere. When we was playing away, we, feel, we felt like we was played at home because we had more fans than any team, apart from Celtic, of course. But uh, so far, uh, very, very good team. Uh, the stadium, the facility, the manager, the team, everything was unbelievable. The fans, the fans was fantastic, shouting, uh, uh, screaming. Sometimes like I remember score a goal, I, did, I was screaming, I wasn't able to hear myself screaming, you imagine, because the fan was screaming more than me. So, no, fantastic time, yeah. Just lastly, it's been such a break for fans not to be able to come into the stadium because of COVID, and it's looking like from this Saturday, our fans will be back in the ground. I assume you'll be looking forward to playing in front of our fans. Of course, yeah. I remember, like, I played against Barnet, so when I was in Southend, so I remember that Barnet have some great fans. So I'm looking forward, like on Saturday, like the fans will be able to come back and uh, and we'll be like a stadium with fans, because like so far when like without stadium, without fans, sorry, in the stadium, it's difficult. I don't. F it's not about the motivation and everything, but the atmosphere is always good when you have fans like uh, pushing you a little bit. So this is good. So looking forward to that. As we welcome Bees fans back to the Hive London for the first time, the matchday experience is certainly going to be different. 
So we take you through the safety protocols that you'll need to follow when you come to the Hive this afternoon. Welcome back to all supporters to the Hive London Stadium. This is our guide to a safe return of spectators into the stadium. This short video is to help you understand the new social distancing protocols in place to keep you safe. Please come into the stadium car park and find somewhere to park. Trying to avoid parking next to other cars if possible. Upon leaving your vehicle, ensure your face covering is in place. All entry to the stadium on an event day is via the West Turnstiles. It is important to remember that this will be your way in, but it will not be your exit, as that is via the other side. You will be temperature checked on the way in, then you will have your ticket checked so we know the correct person has your ticket. Tickets are non-transferable. Whilst you're in the stadium, whether walking around or watching the game, we ask that you keep your face covering in place. Please go to your seat and enjoy the game. Please ensure you sit in the seat denoted on your ticket. If during the game a match ball enters the stadium, please don't throw it back onto the field of play. We're required to sanitise the ball, so please either leave it for a member of staff or roll it onto the walkway at the front of the West Stand for a member of staff to deal with. You may enter the Legends Bar or access one of our refreshment outlets. If you do, you must enter by the Southern End Vomitory by Block B and exit by the Northern Vomitory by Block E. Both of these entrances will be one way, so please ensure you abide by this one-way system. At the end of the game, please leave by the northern end of the stadium. Take care when leaving to try and keep two metres between you and others not in your social bubble. Make your way to the car park and your vehicle using the same safety measures as you did when you arrived. We're delighted to welcome you back to the Hive London and working together we can make this a safe adventure for us all. Please listen to the safety messages and abide by the stewards who are there to help you and to keep you safe. The stewards have legal obligations they have to carry out for the club to continue to allow supporters inside. So please, let us work together to make this a success. Welcome back to The Hive London. Beadle will be looking to put Wednesday's disappointing defeat to FC Halifax Town behind him and start afresh with a positive result against Wildstone this afternoon in front of our own supporters. We caught up with him to get his thoughts ahead of the clash with the Stones. Peter, how important is it that we now sort of put Wednesday to the back of our minds and really start afresh on Saturday with a, with a big game against Wildstone? Yeah, it's a big game. We've, we've pressed the reset button too many times this season already. We've, you know, we've, we've, we've performances that have been at times inept and, and, we, and it's, it's been, you know, it's been, it's been a difficult couple of weeks with also with our injuries as well but but the performances have been for the most part if the fans were here I think they would sort of be fairly sort of comfortable with the performances but we just we're just making too many mistakes at the moment so so it's vitally important that we get back to you know we get back to Hartlepool and the, the Burton and the MK Dons performances and we get back to that quickly as quick as possible. The word consistency has been one that's sort of been consistently used yeah. so far this season. I was speaking to Dunny, he just said it can't be three good games, three bad games. If we can put in a good performance tomorrow, we need to really start laying some foundations going into December. And that's exactly what we said on Wednesday after when I spoke to you after Wednesday, is that, is that at the end of the day we can't be a Jekyll and Hyde team. We can't have two, or two, two decent games followed by two or three poor performances. We need to be as consistent as we can. You know. Yes, we're, we're still a new group. Yes, we're still developing. Yes, we're still progressing. 
but that doesn't come down to you know some of the mistakes we've been making are, are, are you know are just poor you know just poor decision making at times so so we need to be a little bit more consistent and a little bit more thoughtful about our play and about obviously you know when teams do get into our final third we need to you know, we need to make sure we're, we're prepared and we're ready for it and, and you know in training we have been and we've shown we can do it in the games that we've had over recent weeks and um, but we have been a little bit fragile at times when you look at the score on Wednesday, it's, it's of course disappointing, particularly to concede five. But like at one nil, we had two huge chances. If we score that, you'd like to think it, it would have been a different afternoon. But how important is it that we are really as clinical when we get those chances? And that's tomorrow? it. And that's what it comes down to. Is at the end of the day, you know, twenty-seven seconds into the game, and then twelve minutes into the game, you know, we can do something about that. We've still got we've got eighty odd minutes to get back in the game. But 3-0, just before half-time, was a real kick in the teeth. Um, and then to come out and to concede three minutes into the second half, it's just, just not, you know, it's not, it's not excusable. And, and, and we need to be more clinical, and we have had chances. And, and that'll be the same in all the games we've had. You know, the games, the Kings League game, we could have had a penalty in the first minute. We didn't. And then we conceded two minutes later. Then we had a penalty and, and missed it. You know, so, so all these games could be vitally, you know, could be massively different, but, but that's ifs, buts and maybes and it's putting it into practice and you know, we, they've worked hard on the training ground, they've put in lots of effort on the training ground, they've shown they've got a real good strength and a real good character about them in, as a group, but we've only seen glimpses of it and we, we have to do it on a more consistent basis. Having the fans back in the ground <coughs> should really be an advantage, but important that we start on the front foot and really get them on side because they'll be disappointed as well from, of from the Of course, uh, like I said, and we're all disappointed, it, doesn't, you know, it hurts us as much as it, as it hurts them. You know, we're, we're all part of the same football club. We all want to do well for the football club. We don't go out and do it intentionally. We go out with a plan to go and, and put it into practice. And sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does. Um, so we hurt as much as they do. But yeah, it's important that they get behind us from the start. It's great they're coming back. Obviously, you know, it's what we've all wanted for, for a long time now, for them to come back. Hopefully they'll come back in numbers and they'll get behind the team. And even if, you know, even if we do go a goal down or whatever, they still need to be behind the team because that support is invaluable at times. And it is, they are our, you know, as we said, we've talked about it before, they're our 12th support, our 12th man on the pitch. So they can be, they can be a big driving force for us going forward. Um, but the players need to, you know, they're used to playing in front of crowds, so they know how, you know, how it can sway from one way to another. Um, so we just need to make sure we start well. We've started really well in all the games recently. Obviously, Wednesday night, take that apart after 27 seconds but but the other games we've started quite well you know Efron had his chance against MK Dons within the first minute at Hartlepool we started really well you know Woking we started really well Kings Lynn we should have had a penalty in the first minute so we've started the games really well it's about maintaining that consistency again throughout the game and keeping that longevity of our of us in the final third for longer periods as, as, as much as we can and and making the most of them entries into the final third by turning them into goals. It's been six or days, uh, six or so days since we played Burton, and Mikey seemed to pick up quite a nasty-looking injury. Just give us an update on that one. Uh, yeah, well, it was it was probably three weeks since we Burton. It, MK Dons was six days ago. Sorry, that's what I meant. MK Dons. <laughs> so, okay, it's been a long week. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> Mikey's unfortunately Mikey's got a, a grade two tear in his hamstring, so he's going to be sort of six to eight weeks, maybe. Hopefully, he'd be a bit quicker. Hopefully it'll be a quick healer and a good recovery, but um, but we're looking at now sort of six to eight weeks, and added onto that with Xander, and then with Preston, you know we've and obviously Josh is still Josh has trained a little bit this morning, he's done a little bit more work this morning again, so again he's he's really close, but but still not ready to join in full training yet, full contact training yet. So we've had and obviously JJ another one that missed out on Wednesday, and he's probably not going to be fit for tomorrow. So you know so we we are being. You know, being tested because that's what it's all about. Is we we're being tested. We've had lots of injuries. We've had lots of inconsistent performances, and um, we haven't had the depth of the squad we'd like to have um, because of the injuries. Um, but we're we're ploughing on through it, and we're and that's and that's all we can do. We can we can look at it square in the eyes and go and go full throttle and go full into it, or we can cower away and 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 not not be up for it. And that's certainly not the case for us. We're going to be up for it, and like I said, it's the only way we can we can move forward. What would your message be to our fans coming to the game tomorrow? <coughs> to, to get behind the fans, enjoy, to get behind the players, enjoy the day, get behind the team. Hopefully we can give them a performance 
you know, very similar to an MK Don's or Hartlepool performance, something for them to cheer about and something for them to, to show that the grassroots are starting to a sprout through for us to move forward again. But, but we can't keep having this play two games, two or three games and do really well and then have two or three games when we're really poor. Um, well, not really poor, but we make mistakes and, and we get punished for it. So we have to have a certain amount of consistency. And, and, and you know, like I said, we, we also need to have a little bit of, of good fortune as well. So, so hopefully we can give them a really good start, something to get behind us with early doors. And, uh, and obviously it's a big game, bragging rights, a local derby. So obviously it'd be nice to finish with a, with a positive result. New signings have come in, in this week in Villa Mojny and um, Inyefion, two mm. experienced players and certainly add something with, as you were saying, lacking a bit of depth at the moment, so two more bodies does no harm. Yeah, two, two more bodies, but then like I said, we've lost JJ and Michael, so again, we're back to square one of having the same amount of numbers again. So, But they've brought in, you know, they've brought in, um, obviously, Iffy, Inny only trained today, so he didn't train with us. We, obviously, it was done Wednesday, so it was quite late, but he played. Um, and obviously Bilal has, has trained the last couple of days and he's getting up to, he's getting up to speed now so, so hopefully in the next, next couple of weeks we'll, we'll see him play and, uh, and get him in there but, um, but they've brought some massive experience to the squad and, uh, and a little bit of now so a little bit of know-how and also a different voice as well different, they're, you know, they're, they're what you'd call leaders you know, within the group um, so, uh, so it's been nice to add them to in as well Just lastly, if we can get a win tomorrow how nice would it be it's our first meeting with Waldstone competitively in almost 40 years yeah. it'd be nice to finish the week on a real positive note and try and put Wednesday behind us of course I mean we were, we we're looking to bounce back as soon as possible the fact that our games are coming thick and fast at the moment obviously you know we've three games in six days which is putting a strain on the group um, but yeah like I said we're always positive and we're we're hoping for a positive performance first and foremost tomorrow and then, uh, and then hopefully the result will take care of itself and everyone will go home and enjoy their weekend. We can enjoy our weekend and look to come back ready to prepare for the game on Tuesday. That's all we have time for on our Live from the Hive pre-match show. If you're coming down to the Hive London this afternoon, get right behind the boys, cheer them on, and fingers crossed they can reward you with three points. If you're watching on the stream, I hope you enjoy the commentary with Aaron Pullen and myself, Adam Rowe.